Hi everybody, Dr. Wallace here. In this short video, we're going to talk about three of the most common skeletal system disorders for you to be familiar with. The first disorder we're going to talk about is called osteopenia. When we think about osteopenia, make sure you know that this is the normal age-related loss in bone density that occurs with aging. So in every person starting around age 30, bone density begins to decline by about 1% every year. This is just coming naturally with the aging process. So this decrease in bone density that is known as osteopenia increases the risk that your bone will get fractured. Part of this is because we don't have as much calcium to make the bone strong. Part of this is because the collagen is no longer as strong as it used to be. So osteopenia by itself increases the risks of fractures, but osteopenia has the ability to progress into the, the disorder you're more familiar with, osteoporosis. So again, osteopenia happens in everyone. This is normal with aging. If osteopenia becomes severe, we would start to call it osteoporosis. The word osteoporosis literally means bones with holes. Osteoporosis develops as bones lose the level of calcium that they have inside of them. This calcium is being released from the bone tissue by those osteoclasts, those bone breaker cells. So remember back when we were talking about our two types of cells, we say how our osteoclasts break down bone tissue and in normal situations, our osteoblasts build about the same amount of tissue to replace it. This leads to bones with normal density that still have the level of collagen and calcium that they need. But with aging, those osteoclasts become more active and the osteoblasts slow down. These two things together means that we're resorbing or breaking down more bone tissue than we're forming. This leads us to an increased risk of fractures, especially if you remember from our discussion of fractures, the kinds called compression fractures, where a bone squeezes down on itself. We also see a lot of comminuted hip fractures. Remember that in a comminuted fracture, the bone just shatters. So in an individual with osteoporosis, we're likely to shatter regions of our femur, especially this region up here called the neck. That's likely to shatter into multiple pieces because the bone density is so low. When we think about risk factors for developing osteoporosis, some of them are what we would, would say are within a person's control, and some of them are not. One of the factors that is not within a person's control is their sex. So females are at a much higher risk of developing osteoporosis than males. This comes down to that graph that we were looking at. When a woman goes through menopause, she's no longer making the hormone estrogen. That hormone helped to maintain her bone mass. So females see a decrease in estrogen where males continue to synthesize testosterone. Females at a much higher risk of developing osteoporosis. Anyone who started their, their bone decline process with a lower bone density is also already at a higher risk of osteoporosis. So individuals who are, are smaller and don't have as much strain put on their skeletal system, and also individuals who don't exercise or have very much physical activity, remember that physical activity helps to strengthen your bones based on Wolf's Law. If we're not very active, if we are not very large to begin with, we already have a low bone density. Losing even more is even more problematic. The final re uh, risk factor to mention is a dietary risk factor, and this would be something that is more within a patient's control. If your diet is low in calcium, uh, you need calcium in your bloodstream, and the place to get it into your bloodstream would then be your bone tissue. It would be broken down. And remember that we also have collagen proteins inside our bone tissue. If the level of protein in our diet is too low, we might also break down bone tissue to get that component as well. So making sure that the diet is rich in calcium, making sure that you're staying active with exercise, 
these kinds of things can help slow down the progression of osteoporosis. But remember, every person will develop what's the stage ahead of this. Osteopenia, all of us develop this. Osteoporosis, some risk factors if that osteopenia progresses. I wanna mention one other condition for you that relates to dietary calcium levels, and this is rickets. When we talk about rickets, the easy name for this would be soft bones. And what I mean by that is individuals have bones that have an inappropriately low level of calcium. Remember that calcium is what makes your bones hard. If we don't have that calcium, uh, we are not going to have the strong, heavy bones that are normal. So in a patient with rickets, you can often observe from the outside uh, what we say is called the bowing of the legs. The legs are bending in response to the normal pressures that are put on them by walking. If we look at these individuals' x-rays to see what their, their legs look like, notice that uh, there's areas where there's really hardly any calcium in this bone tissue. We see it more showing up faintly without that calcium that's missing. What causes rickets is typically a low level of vitamin D. We didn't talk about it a lot, but vitamin D is what your body needs to be able to absorb calcium. Without this vitamin D, you can have all the calcium in the world, but you wouldn't be able to absorb it. What puts a person at risk for rickets has a lot to do with their diet. Now, when I say diet, I'm meaning things like what this is common in babies. So babies exclusively drinking breast milk, no formula fed, no vitamins, uh, they are often low in vitamin D. Vitamin D is something that's not found in breast milk, so the calcium in breast milk is not automatically absorbed without some other sources of vitamin D. We also see that in low-fat dairy sources, there tends to be less vitamin D. So when a child first starts drinking milk, the doctor will often recommend uh, that they drink whole milk, or when you see it at the grocery store, it's often called vitamin D milk. It's fortified with extra vitamin D to make sure that the calcium in that milk is absorbed better. What also predisposes many individuals to rickets is where they live. Living in a northern latitude, so for example in Canada or some of those northern regions, individuals there have less UV radiation exposure. Now we talked about UV radiation as leading to skin cancer, but the other thing that UV radiation helps the body do is make its own vitamin D. In fact, the level of vitamin D that you need can be made by your skin if you're outside with your forearms exposed to the sun for about 15 minutes. That's all it takes. But that's because we live in Texas and we have pretty high UV exposure. In those northern latitudes without that UV exposure, it's a lot harder to make the vitamin D that you need to make. And with that, uh, if your diet is already low in vitamin D, that can make it much harder to grab that calcium as well. So make sure we know what causes rickets, which is low calcium that's being put into bone tissue. We can't absorb it. Osteoporosis, we've stolen that calcium from the bone tissue. And osteopenia, bone density is starting to decline simply because of aging.